acceptable to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. Those words were used a few moments ago as we lit the second candle in our Advent wreath, a candle that represents the prophets, <coughs> the major prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and the minor prophets that include Hosea, Joel, Amos, and Micah, and not to forget Sarah, Miriam, Hannah, or Esther. If you ask most people what they know about prophets, they would probably say that the prophets foretold the future, and more specifically, they foretold the birth of Jesus. And that's a common understanding of prophets, that they're some kind of Old Testament fortune tellers, or worse still, ancient Jewish Nostradamuses. But that's not really what the prophets were. At least that's not what they were primarily about. In Jewish tradition, a prophet is someone who has a special relationship with God. They are seen to be selected by him, and they speak for him. Prophets don't speak for themselves, but rather they call the people back to the way that God has laid out for them. The message they bring is often one of social change. Where the nation of Israel had lost its way, the prophets were used to bring them back. These people were great orators, great speakers, who spoke the truth of God, regardless of danger to themselves. The prophets were often the target of persecution and oppression. In fact, the prophets were often in conflict with the powers of the day. Nathan had the nerve to confront the greatest of all Jewish kings, David. Amos was kicked out of the northern kingdom because he dared speak out against King Jeroboam in one of his own royal temples. Both Micah and Isaiah fiercely attacked the political and religious leaders of their day. The prophets were the voice of God speaking to his people, calling the people back to him calling them to respond faithfully to the God who had revealed himself in their history. But even as they spoke for God, they also spoke for the weak, the oppressed, the disenfranchised, the downtrodden and the slave. The two things went hand in hand, speaking for God and for the oppressed. They speak of God's bias towards the poor and the oppressed. God had brought his people out of slavery in Egypt. He had entered into their world and saved and delivered them from the oppressor. Such oppression of the helpless by the powerful was understood to be a violation of the most fundamental part of God's revelation of himself, that he is the, the the kind of God who hears the cries of the oppressed slaves and responds with grace and deliverance. The prophets were a thorn in the side of those who would be there, who would use their power for their own ends and have no thought for their brothers and sisters, who could not see through their riches and power that God was calling them to community with the rest of humanity, to be family with all of creation, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with him who had called them out of slavery. So the prophets were called by God. They spoke out for justice for the downtrodden and oppressed, and they were often persecuted for doing what God had called them to do. But the prophets of the Old Testament can seem very strange and far away to us. David, Ahaz, Jeroboam may have needed speaking to by Nathan, Isaiah and the rest, but it all seems so long ago. But of course we also have John the Baptist, who we actually celebrate next week, telling us 
telling the Pharisees and the Sadducees that they were a brood of vipers and to bear fruit worthy of repentance. And in two weeks' time, we will remember Blessed Mary and of her song, talking of casting down the mighty and raising the lowly up, a perfect example of God's bias towards the poor and the lowly. And there have also been those who followed the prophetic lead in the not-so-distant past. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German Lutheran pastor, stood up to the evils of the Nazi regime. Bonhoeffer delivered a broadcast condemning his Hitler just two days after he had become Chancellor in 1933. He was virtually a lone voice in the German church circles when he stood up for the Jews, telling his fellow Christians that the church must not simply bandage the victims under the wheel, but jam the spoke in the wheel itself. He called for pastors to suspend all sacraments as an act of opposition to the regime. And in a statement he wrote for the Confessing Church, he affirmed the place of the Jews as God's covenant people. Like most prophets, he wasn't without his inconsistencies. He moved away from Germany and took up a post in London. He worked for German intelligence as an anti-Nazi double agent and was involved in the plot to kill Hitler. Bonhoeffer was condemned to death in April 1945, without witnesses, without recordings of any of the trial, or without a defence, and he was executed the next day. The doctor present said, in almost 50 years that I have worked as a doctor, I have hardly ever seen a man die so entirely submissive to the will of God. Another prophet of our time was Dom Helder Camera, a Roman Catholic Archbishop in Brazil who could easily have become a cardinal had he not seen it as his job to speak out against the oppression of the poor and the corruption in government. Dom Helder was a godly, pious man who found that God was, called, was telling him he needed to speak up for those in his care who had no voice of their own. He brought great changes to his archdiocese, giving more say to the laity and started sem starting seminaries where the training priests lived and worked with the poor in the shanty town. Dom Helder was hounded by the secret police and in May 1969 a death squad murdered one of his young assistant priests. The military dictatorship hated what he was saying so much that he, they censored all reference to him in Brazilian publications. Despite being an archbishop, he became a non-person in Brazil. Dom Helder famously said, when I feed the poor, they call me a saint. When I ask why the poor are hungry, they call me a communist. He lived long enough in retirement to see most of his liberal changes overturned by his far more conservative successor. Two examples of people who have been called by God, who spoke out for justice for the downtrodden and oppressed, and were persecuted for doing so. I could name many more. Aung San Suu Kyi, Mahatma Gandhi, the Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Rosa Parks, Desmond Tutu. So, is God calling us to be prophets? I doubt it. And if I'm brutally, brutally honest with myself, I really hope not. It doesn't seem to me to be a job with great prospects. But maybe the church is right to remind us at this time of year that we should be looking to speak up for those less fortunate than ourselves. As a contemporary of Dom Helder, the martyred, the martyred prophet Oscar Romero said, we must not seek the child Jesus in the pretty figures of our Christmas crib. We must seek him among the undernourished children who have gone to bed at night with nothing to eat, and among the poor newsboys who will sleep covered with newspapers in doorways.
Archbishop Romero was murdered while saying Mass. According to the audio recording of the Mass, he was shot at the end of the Eucharistic rite while elevating the chalice. His blood spilt over the altar with its contents. I don't want to be a prophet, but Jesus, whose birth we await, wants us to stand up for the poor and the downtrodden. We are unlikely to have the platform of the people I have mentioned, but we can all be prophets in our own community. While there are still people sleeping on the streets of Brighton, God calls us to be prophets. While there are victims of torture seeking refuge here, God calls us to be prophets. And while half the world starves, God calls us to be prophets. Let us all pray this Advent season that we can open ourselves up to God and hear what he is asking us to say and do in his word. I leave you with the words of perhaps the most famous prophet of modern times, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. History will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamour of the bad people, but the appalling silence, silence of the good people. Help us as we prepare to celebrate your son's birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. In the name of the true and living Holy One, who made us for love, who saved us by love, and loves us still. Amen.